Welcome to Mobile Meals. Steve Duval along with Tom Shaw from Thor Motor Coach. Today we are talking about childhood favorites. So think about, you know, your nieces and your nephews and even when you were young. What were some of the things they ordered when they go out to eat? Chicken nuggets and cheeseburgers. Those were my, I think, maybe pizza. Maybe pizza. Chicken nuggets, chicken fingers. We got those today. A little deep fried goodness never hurt anybody. And this is going to be an unbelievably simple and delicious recipe, which we will give you the entire ingredients at the end of the segment along with our Aria scale. And this is really easy. Yeah, this one's pretty simple. And Tom has got an unbelievable honey mustard sauce to go with our chicken strips. Yeah, it'll strips. go great. It's really simple to make. Uh, take you, you know, about a minute. If that. So here's what you need, all right? This is our chicken, which you already have cut up. We decided, you know what, fish, I my, my oldest or my youngest, she likes fish, so we're gonna do some fish in this batter as well. So we have our chicken already cut up. We have our flour we're gonna dredge it in and our batter. Again, we're gonna give you the batter recipe at the end of the segment and our oil is ready to go. But Tom has got a really neat trick that uh, he discovered for cooking, especially something messy like this with our electric induction cooktop. Yeah, this is great for the electric induction cooktop. You cannot do this with the gas for no. sure. Uh, but we're able to put down uh, parchment paper over uh, the cooktop and then put our pan on top of that. So now, when, if any grease happens to pop out, which and it, it, will, it will, trust me, it will. Uh, now we've got uh, less cleanup. You know, yep. it's gonna it's going to go on the paper. There's no fire. We don't have to worry mm. about that. It worked great. So. Well, there's no fire yet. We haven't put anything in the grease. But that's one thing that you can help with the grease is one. The parchment paper does not impact the grease, and we have our temperature set right now about uh, 350 degrees, and you want your fish or your chicken to be room temperature because one, what will happen if it's not, it will splatter, it's going to drop the temperature of your grease, and it's not going to cook evenly. So yeah, definitely not cold and, and right. hot. Got a couple pieces of chicken, and what you want to do is you want to dredge these things in the flour. Right. It's going to get messy no matter what Yes, you do it here. is. And remember, it's raw chicken and raw fish, so you're going to. I would do all the chicken and then and the fish. I would do it in that order. So you got that. You kind of shake it off. You want to shake that off. Go ahead and just sink those in there. Let's uh, batter them up. And you just go ahead and you batter up all of your pieces there, shake off the excess flour, and really just drown them in there. Just get them nice and coated with the batter there. All right, and once there, you sink them in there, and you know, just kind of let the batter drip off. We're gonna put them in a plate. Normally, you'd go right into the fryer, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and put these on a plate. We're making a lot of these today. Cause yes, we are. This is our lunch. Yeah, this is gonna be our lunch. This morning, Tom was like, what, should, what are you doing for lunch? I'm like, we're making it. And this is it, so let that excess batter drip off. Here we go, this is gonna be, this is gonna be good. All right, so here we are, we have our grease. And it's about 350. Just kind of drop that in. Ah, there's one. Uh, I may overflow this pan. <laughs> there's two. It's all right, we got our paper down. Yeah, see, that's a great idea. And just kind of back and forth, drop it in there. And you're going to go about seven to nine minutes. And a great way to tell when they're done is they're going to start to float to the top. So we're going to let these cook, and we'll see you in about seven to nine minutes. All right, we got our first batch done, our second batch is cooking, and well, that fries to a crispy, delicious goodness. Tom is going to show us his, what is it, beer honey mustard sauce. Yes, it's uh, real easy. So we got uh, two uh, one-third cups of stone ground mustard. Nice, nice, nice. And this kind of overpowers the entire room. That's all <laughs> I smell right now is that. And then we've got a third of a cup of honey. Some nice honey in there. Yes. Love the honey mustard. Ranch is always good as well. That honey mustard nuggets that. that you is know you can at. buy honey mustard in the thing. Oh, but, but why make this it? Is, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This is, this is a little bit better. better. Yeah. You know, so. And there's going to be a lot of leftover beer, which goes great. Exactly. With deep fried food. Yes. So, uh, recommend using porter. Mm -hmm. We didn't have porter in our refrigerator, so uh, we're using a, uh, a just a brown ale, and it's just two teaspoons. Uh, teaspoons yeah. And we're just going to guess and go like that. It's a little beer, right? You can yeah. flavor it, and again, you flavor it to your liking. And we'll, we'll just kind of be able to tell the texture here. Yeah. When we, uh, I bet that's feels. good. I'm going to grab a spoon yeah. here. And I was prepared. 
Oh, of course there you, you were. Good stuff. That's good stuff. Like I said, now we can split a beer. And we're gonna be good to go. Ah, delicious. I'll tell you what, we're gonna check on our next batch of chicken. We're gonna drop in the fish. We'll be back in just a few it's minutes. It's coming out great. It's coming out really good. We're gonna check back in as soon as it's all done and we'll show you the finished product. So we're getting ready to pull out the fish and it's important to talk about the oil and monitoring the temperature and it's a great investment. It was five bucks for a fry slash candy thermometer and oh, it yeah. clips right onto your pan because what happens is you get your oil to 350 which this cooks in and as soon as you put that in, just plummets. Yeah. Just plummet. So in between batches, make sure you bring that oil temperature back up and that way everything will cook evenly and you should be good to go. And this should be done by now. It's got a nice golden brown flavor. So let's take out our fish here. You know what would have been good? What's that? We should have done some potatoes in here. Oh yeah. Yeah, some fries or some... Uh, we got the oil going, you know. You could do that too if you wanted to, but we put these on a paper towel to drain the grease. And the reason you put them in, if you notice, these are not stuck together. That's because you put them in individually, one at a time, and then they don't stick together. You can use the temperature setting and choose the temperature, and we have that set at 360 degrees, and it brings that oil right up to temperature, and you just keep it there, and every time you put it in, you cook, you do a batch, it'll come right back up. And so just keep it mo monitored. As long as you have that, you can monitor your temperature. Uh, I think you're good to go. So we got- That smells really good. Isn't it good? All right, look at that. We got uh, fish, we got chicken. Oh, it's like a little buffet here, isn't it? Yeah. Got, now, you, Tom, are the beer guy, and I will tell you this, and Tom can probably, I don't think he has enough digits to count. When it comes to pairing beers, whenever I am in a jam, the phone rings and Tom knows, <laughs> all right, Tom, I'm here, and this is what I'm having. What this, beer goes this with what this? You're gonna want. Yep, so what would you say, what would you recommend for uh, a deep fried feast like we're about to partake in? You know, this one, uh, deep fried food and beer just go yes, really well. Yes, it does. Together. So it's kind of up to anybody's, anybody's flavoring. You know, I, I think what we're going to enjoy, we had a couple grapefruit IPAs, which will be really good. So yeah. I think that's what we're going to have with this. Um, just kind of depends if it's if it's cold out. Uh, maybe I'd go with a stout, uh, something a little heavier. But you know, this is this is just this good is just good, good eating. Yeah, it is, and it, it was really easy to do. And again, what you want to do, and because you know when you're cutting your chicken, some of, and what we use was fresh chicken breast, and then we trimmed them all up. You could go ahead and you could buy the pre-cut tenderloins if you wanted, and they're kind of. But pull them out, you know, after that seven to nine minutes and go ahead and cut into the thicker part of it. Make sure that it's done in seven, it's generally around seven to nine minutes. And the fish was a little thinner, so that cooked up a little bit faster. Obviously, you gotta let it cool down. So I think we're ready to partake. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna this grab this looks, one here. Ooh, that is yeah. still toasty hot. Do the same. Oh, uh, we got the recipe coming up for you right at the end of this video. Cook times. Perfect. Look at that. That's perfect. So the entire recipe, all the ingredients, Our the Aria measurements. Scale. Yes, on the Aria scale, what would you say? This is this was so easy. I, I'm two. two. Two Arias two. on this, you know, because we got uh, chicken, fish, and sauce. I got a little tartar sauce there, but here we go. It is time for us to enjoy lunch. Thanks for watching Mobile Meals. We will see you next time. Mm. That's, so good. That's fantastic, Tom. <laughs>